Now, in the past, Moore has seen a lot of support from voters here in the Wiregrass, a likely reason he chose this area. And when you're going inside, police advise you to bring your personal items in because locking the door just isn't enough. Prepare to be amazed at this six acre cornfield designed to get you lost. As for us, we hope to see you on the other side. Our weather coverage continues this morning on Wake Up Wiregrass. We've got a team out traveling the area. Barely enough to build a snowball, but many are saying that's enough for them. It's an election year, so many state officials are hoping for an easy, breezy session, meaning not too many controversial subjects will be up for debate. Door right behind me that is no longer there may be responsible for her survival. You saw there was a need for someone. Why did you decide you were that someone? What do you think you yeah. will bring to the race? So you had the sensation of flying without even leaving the ground. Although wintry weather is a rare occurrence here in the Wiregrass, when it does strike, it proves to cause chaos for emergency responders and travelers alike. The little kids can crawl all over you, but I'm taking it adults. That's a no go. Oh, <laughs> some of them do. <laughs> but the new law says that alimony will not be taxable for the receiver or deductible for the one signing the check. It was passed by the legislature and now it's up to the courts to apply it on a case by case basis. They had the hearings this morning. I was there. I was live tweeting that many people are still in disbelief over the closing. They're trying to figure out how to get it reopened. I'm standing in front of the corn dog man, and whenever you get here, don't worry. It's still here. It has moved. Standing taller than a football field in length, this building isn't just tall for the wiregrass. It's setting records for the whole United States. I was shocked, horrified, and devastated to see my son this way. It's been six days since the altercation between Troy police and 17-year-old Ulysses Wilkerson III. We do know for a fact that Ulysses remembers one thing, a big, tall, white officer kicking him in the face. The family says he suffered a fractured eye socket in three different places and massive swelling to the face and jaw. He's worried about that eye. It, it's not doing, he's worried about he's gonna lose it. Wilkerson has since been released from the hospital and between tears <laughs> and painful silences. They say they are thankful he is alive. I could have been doing a funeral. But saying they still have many questions and few answers. I hear what they're telling the reporters, but they hadn't told me nothing. I'm learning from y'all. I don't think they told me to. My son was at the hospital. I don't know why they stopped him. Troy police have said officers saw the teen walk from behind a closed downtown business just before midnight on Saturday when Wilkerson allegedly fled on foot as officers got out of their car. When apprehended, they say Wilkerson refused to put his hands behind his back and reached for his waistband, which prompted them to restrain him using physical force. An investigation has been launched by the State Bureau, but those at today's press conference say right now they want transparency and ultimately justice. No one talks about a body camera, so that's my really concern. First on this body camera. Siblings are wearing shirts and the mother and father as well. All lives matter. So let's not let nobody diminish or demean it into a racial battle. It's about right and wrong. And that's all I'm advocating for, answers. What happened? Why? Saturday night around 11, Dothan police began the frantic search for a dad and his two kids. A perimeter was set up. Basically, the whole patrol squad was sent over there to begin canvassing the area. Concerns continue to grow when they were not found in his apartment at Johnson Homes because of an earlier call to 911 from another person scared their lives were in danger. The caller stated that he was going to harm his two children and, and commit suicide. So they decided to bring in reinforcements. We called out seven investigators. We had a Dothan Fire Department personnel on scene, and we also had some deputies from the Houston County Sheriff's Office to include one of their bloodhounds. Asking neighbors if they had seen him when they too joined in on the search. Everybody, don't everybody out here? Everybody speak to everybody out here? Yeah. Of course, they're going to come together as one. Short time later, Mr. McCullough was observed by one of the patrol units. They attempted to stop and speak to him. Mr. McCullough fled on foot. He was found later hiding inside another apartment, but the kids, a two-year-old and a four-year-old, nowhere in sight. Mr. McCullough at that time was not cooperative, would not tell us where the children were, so we continued our search. After hours of searching, they finally found the two small children locked in one of these brick trash containers, relatively unharmed, but covered in ants. 
It was kind of an emotional roller coaster for all involved. Even throughout finding the children, we were happy that the kids were okay in the sense they were still alive, but we were extremely upset about the condition as the kids were found in. They were taken to a local hospital for their scratches and bites, but are expected to make a full recovery. And we're hoping that due to the age of them, they won't be scarred mentally too bad. A morning spent with laughs, <laughs> learning, <laughs> if that doesn't light your fire, your wood's wet. And of course, Lincoln Logs. Hey, mom, Scully. My mom. Hello? Hey, mom, can I call you right back? Thanks. Playing house or doctor or policeman might not seem like a hard day at school, but for 16 Houston County students, that's a reality as they are the first public school first class pre-K program in the county. Every year are evaluating, you know, the needs for more first class pre-K. And so I had a conversation with Mr. Sewell and uh, it's exciting to know that Houston County made history in their public schools today with their first first class pre-K program. At the ribbon cutting, parents were eager for their child's new learning opportunity. Our son Ralston, who is four, gets to be a part of the new pre-K program. and He is at a school where I attended briefly, and I know that he is getting the patience, uh, you know, with Miss Mills and Miss Smith that, you know, that he needs. The teachers already optimistic about the pilot year. They're playing together. They're learning to how to get along. They're learning what we expect from them. There's been a huge difference from the first day of school until now. A huge difference. Already. Already. And lawmakers saying data shows the benefits of early education for years to come. By the time they're in third grade, they're reading at grade level. They're less likely to need special ed. Their, their attendance is better. But Representative Chestine, who says he knows firsthand the benefits. Having my uh, five-year-old granddaughter Grace in the program last year at Kids Academy in Geneva, I just watched her grow through the program last year and saw the, the Im improvements that she was making. And only 28% of Alabama children in the nation's best pre-K program, expansion is crucial. We need to give every four-year-old in this state a, a, a smart start.